Welcome to this tutorial 3 of Gita Paniniyam. So we will continue our study of Atsandhi further. So a quick recap of what we did last time. So we had seen Vriddhi Sandhi. We have actually six types of Atsandhis. Vriddhi, Lopaha, Yana, Dirga, Guna and Purva Rupam. So in this tutorial, we are going to learn about the Lopa Sandhi, which has been used in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 1 and 2. So let us look at the various uh, examples. So you have got Sarva Eva, Sarve Eva, Sarve Eva, there is an Ekara Lopam, Sarva Eva Maharataha. So this comes in Sloka, first chapter, sixth Sloka and first chapter, eleventh Sloka. Similarly, ye te atra samagataha. In case of ye te atra samagataha, there are three specific words. So ye, e te and atra. But then as we are discussing a zero to lopaha, then we are found concentrating only on ye and e te. So we are looking at ye and e te as a result of which your ekaram after ye is dropped. Then we have got same way te ta ime avastitaha. So it's actually te ime avastitaha. This ekara lopam has happened. So if you look at ta plus a plus ime. Similarly, ratopastha upavishata. So ratopaste upavishata. So ta plus a plus upa. So there is something called Ekar lopam here. It is called as ekar lopam. Yotsya iti govinda. Same way yotsye iti govinda. So yotsye iti govinda, where yo is again ekar lopam. But exact, technically, it is something else which we will see in the following slides. So, as a common rule, we talk about. Ekara lopam, but it is something beyond that as we see, because this derivation is not a straightforward one and involves multiple steps. So now let us look at the related Panini Sutras. I have used the word lopaha. Now what is lopaha? So each and every word needs to be defined. So this is a Sanya Sutram, which is Adarshanam. Lopaha. So, Lopaha is the process of making something disappear. So, Prasaktasya Adarshanam Lopasanyam Syat. That is what is the meaning of Adarshanam Lopaha. So, which is a Sanya Sutram, as we have seen earlier also. Sanyacha Paribhashacha Vidir Niyama Evacha Atidesho Adhikarascha Shadvidam Sutra Lakshanam. So, now we have got Lopaha Shakalyasya. So, in the opinion of Shakalya or according to Shakalya, Shakalyasya is Shasti Vibhakti, Lopaha is Pratama Vibhakti. So, according to Shakalya, a yakar or vakar present at the end of a pada and situated after a gets removed and is followed by a letter from Ash Pratyaharam in the context of Samhita. This is a simple definition of Lopaha Shakalyasya. When we go further, we will try to understand it. So now, one more new thing or a new concept which I need to introduce here is the concept of optional rules. So the certain rules or the certain vidhi rules can be mandatory or optional. So now, how do I identify whether a sutra is mandatory or optional. So whenever the sutra is optional, there are four keywords. So in uh, listen, uh, the new tech computer jargons, we use what is called as keywords. So the first keyword which to identify is generally is the word ch. So example of a sutra, anachi ch. So the moment the word ch comes in a sutra, in certain cases, the sutra is optional or this rule itself is optional. The second one is va. 
Va itself, the word va itself is optional. So one sutra which I can give you example is va chandasi, which is third adhyaya, fourth pada, 88th sloka. Then we have got another key word to identify whether it is optional. It is anyatarasyam. So the moment the word anyatarasyam is used in a sutra, it means that rule is optional. So the example is jayo ho anyatarasyam 8462. So that is how it is. And the fourth condition of knowing whether the use is optional or not is where Panini has used the name of grammarians. Please understand, as I said in my earlier Lagu Siddhanta Kaumadi videos also, the Panini is not the creator of the language. What Panini has done is uh, done. <coughs> what Panini did was a reverse engineering and defining the various grammar rules. Language existed even before Panini. Grammar existed even before Panini. There were a lot of grammarians like Shakalya, Svotayana, Shakatayana, etc. And they also have defined certain grammar rules. So now in case of Panini, when Panini is writing the sutra, he has seen a specific usage. So this usage is defined by the specific rishis or the earlier grammarians. So some examples are lopaha shakalyasya, sambuddho shakalyasya etavan anarshe, arshe, avang sphotayanasya, langaha shakhatayanasya eva. So the moment you see these sort of names, also you need to know the sutra is an optional rule. So this is the first one such we are looking at. So, lopaha shakalyasya. So, what are the learnings in this? The learning in this is the first learning is that this is an optional sutra because shakalyasya has come. The second rule is padanta va or ya preceded by a or a is followed by ash is dropped. Now, what happens? Where did we get the word padayan, padanta yoho, yava yoho? And Ash, this is all coming from the earlier sutra. So, sutreshu, there is another su, uh, explanation. Sutreshu adrisham padam sutrantarad anuvartaniyam sarvatra. So, it is taken, the padanta ya, ya and va is coming from the previous sutra related to this, as well as Ash is all coming there. Now, the biggest confusion starts here. Where we have defined survey Ava is equal to server plus A plus Ava. So the second learning, we are talking about ver, we are talking about year. So the neither year is there, neither padanta ver or year you are seeing. Also, there is no akarantam. Then how come this lopaha is happening? So do not get confused here. So before this rule becomes applicable, there is an intermediary step which we need to know and understand. So what is that intermediary step? The intermediary step we will see in the next slide. So if you look at uh, the intermediary step is A07. So I will not go into A07 in depth at this uh, juncture in this tutorial because we have got a separate tutorial for A07. So as per A07 rule, HO Ayava Yavaha, which will be explained in subsequent session, Sarva A plus Ava becomes, because of the HO Ayava Yavaha rule, A plus Ava, it becomes Sarva plus I plus Ava. So this Ekarantam is drawn, replaced. This Ekarantam is replaced by I. And now once this I comes into picture, you have got the rule which can be applied. Step one, you should have a. Step two, you should have padaya, padanta ya or va, which is there. And you should have an ash. So what is ash? We have already seen in Panini's Pratyahara Sutram. Ash means I, Una, Rilika, Yeong, Ayao, Chayavarata, Lana, Jamangana, Jabanja, Gadadacha, 
Jabagada Dasha. So all these alphabets, when it comes, all this uh, come when it comes before the after this entire thing is called Ash. So when this Ash comes, so three steps. Step one, you should have an A. Step two is you should have a Padanta year, and you should then it should be followed by Ash. So in this case, A is an example of Ash because A comes here. So A is nothing but an Ash. So in such cases, when an A followed by Padanta year, followed by Ash, then what happens? The year is dropped or the Lopa happens to this year. So this year is dropped. As a result, you have Sarva Eva. Now, again, you may ask me, what is Padantam? So Padantam, again, is defined by Panini. It is not an advanced session. So I can give you some definitions of uh, uh, this one Padam. So there are four definitions of Padam, which is given. Suptingantam Padam, Nakyehe, Siticha, Swadishu, Sarvanamastani. These are the four definitions of Padasantya. So all that you have to know in this case is I is nothing but a Padantam. Just because I is a Padantam, therefore this Ya becomes Lopa. Therefore we have a Rupam called Sarva Eva. Now when Sarva Eva rule is formed, again you have got A plus A coming again. And we have learned in our earlier tutorial where we have learned the rule A01, which is Vriddhi Rechi. So in this case, if you go by the rule A01, Vriddhi Rechi, the form should have become Sarvaiva because again, applying Vriddhi Rechi, Sarva plus Eva becomes Sarvaiva. So ideally, this Rupam should become sar Sarvaiva. However, it does not become that because of a very, 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 very important sutra, which all of you have to know. And this is a beautiful concept, which the con unless you understand this concept, you will get confused. So there is a concept of what uh, Panini has done. He has split his entire Ashtadhyayi in two parts. The part one is from chapter one, is from the chapter one, up to the eighth chapter, first pada, that is part one. And then the second part is from the eighth chapter, second, third, and fourth pada. So what the first sloka of the third pada is talking about is Purvatra Asiddham. In the eighth chapter, second pada, the first sutra is telling what is Purvatra Asiddham. So whatever I have talked to you before is not visible to any of the sutras which is applied here. So the two important things which you have to know in this case is there are the three things you should know. One is Purvatra Asiddham. This is one you have to know. Then when you read each sutra, you should remember whether this sutra is coming in part one or part two. So if you look at Lopaha Shakalyasya is coming in part two. Because of the number, you see here it is eight to three. So anything below eight, two and below is coming as part two. And if you look at the Vriddhi Rechi, it is coming in 6188. So what Panini is telling is any rule which is applied in the second part will not be visible to the first part. So in the eyes of Vriddhi Rechi, that year Lopa does not happen. For him, year still exists. So in the eyes of Sutra 6188, that year is still there. Therefore, it does not apply the rule Vriddhi Rechi. That is the very important part because this Purvatra Siddham will come for many of the sutras. So wherever when you are studying the sutra, we should look at whether it is this sutra is coming as part of the first part or it is coming as part of the second part. 
So now, as we have seen, low power shakal yasya itself is an optional rule. So we will also have one form called sarva yeva without the low power yakaram by rule A07. And we will have the second rupam sarva yeva with the low power applying rule A7 and 02. So in Bhagavad Gita, you will see most of the rupas which are used is the second form. Even though it is optional, this rule is more popular. And this is typically because we need to have anushtup chandas or eight syllable per meter. If I use the first form, then there will be a chando bhangam, what we call it as chando bhangam. So in order to avoid that chando bhangam, we need the second form is more popular. Similarly, if you see the other two uh, so slokas or the lopam we saw, rathopastha upavishat and na yotsya iti govindam, yotsya iti, the rule applicable on that after finishing your uh, yakara lopam, so I will call it as yakaram and within bracket, which I said, ekara lopam. So as I be began with and telling you the difference. So technically it is yakara lopam, but generally we call it as ekara lopam. So in case of ekara lopam, in case of ratopaste uh, upavishata and yotse iti govinda, the rule ad gunaha does not become applicable because ad gunaha is also as a first part of the Panani's dissection, whereas your uh, Lopaha Shakalya says in the second part. So in the eyes of 6187, the Lopa has not happened because Lopa is in the second part. So this comes with this, we come to the end of the rule A02 in this tutorial. We will see what is rule A03 in the next tutorial. Happy learning.